Happy Friday. Thank you for joining me today. Happy Friday. Thanks for having me. Awesome. Awesome. Before we get into all the fun stuff, uh, if you mind sharing a little bit uh, about where you're at right now in the world and in some personal highlights. <laughs> I know you just uh, celebrated your first wedding anniversary last night, correct? I did. Yeah. One year marriage down. So that was fun. Um, and I have a funny story about that too, but I'm Jessica Shuttleworth. I live in Charlotte, North Carolina. Um, I've been here for, I think going on nine years now. I'm originally from Ohio. Go Browns. Um, <laughs> Who says that? Yeah, I had to get that in. Um, something that I shouldn't be proud of, but I don't know why I am to be a Browns fan. Um, yeah, so I've been in Charlotte for nine years. I love it. I'm slowly recruiting my family down here too. My sister moved down here a couple of years ago and she's now in Columbia, South Carolina, which is just a hop, skip and a jump away from me. And uh, my mom and my stepdad moved down here about two years ago and now I'm trying to get my dad and my sister. So uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a great place to be, you know, close to the beach, close to the mountains, yep. we'll get your four seasons. So a um, little bit about me. Never, I've never done a live uh, video before or a live Facebook thing. Um, and I was a little nervous last night and I, I, I wanted to tell you this story and start off like with an icebreaker. So because it was our one year wedding anniversary, um, you know, people save their cake and freeze yep. it for a year, yep. which is a terrible thing to do because the tape, everyone was like, it's so <laughs> terrible, it's gonna taste so bad. So we, uh, we had a couple glasses of wine with dinner and uh, I looked to my husband and I said, hey, you wanna like go live on Instagram and eat our cake? Cause I wanted the experience of going live just to see what it was like before I got on here with you. Um, so we ate our cake live on Instagram and we probably had like two people watch, but it was really fun. <laughs> that's good. That's good. That's good. Well, if you can eat, if you can eat in front of a bunch of people, then you're, uh, that's, that's true. Yeah. It's yeah, that's true. Not harder I than... didn't have my makeup or hair done. So thank you for this too. Cause this is yeah. the first time I've done that in a couple months. So yeah, good, <laughs> good. Yeah. You know, there's no reason to get up and, and, uh, you know, get ready. I mean, this is me getting ready every day. So that's, uh, that's true. Good. You have it pretty easy. Yeah. Awesome. So yeah, you know, it's funny. I've heard so many in working with you and there's other people in the Carolinas. I've heard so much good stuff about like North Carolina and just a place to live. And, you know, for similar to California where you do get the full four seasons, um, you know, certain parts of California, you're not going to get the snow part, but um, yeah, that's awesome. That's yeah. Awesome. So you haven't, you haven't switched over to being a Carolina Panthers fan then, huh? Mm, you know what? I, so when I lived in Charlotte for the first couple of years, I lived like right, they call it uptown here, not downtown. Right. Um, so I lived uptown for a couple of years and outside of my window, I could see inside the, the Panther stadium. So it was hard not to cheer for them because it right. felt like it was so close. So yes, I did cheer for the Panthers, but the Browns did come to Carolina a couple of years ago and I was a, in orange and Brown the whole yeah. way. So Browns over Panthers, but I will cheer for the Panthers. Yeah. No, I applaud you for putting yourself out there as a Browns fan. I mean, you want to talk about brave. That's brave. So, so brave. Yeah. Hey, in my <laughs> lifetime, it's bound to happen, right? Yeah. You can only lose so much. <laughs> <laughs> cool. So let's get into, uh, let's get into your, your journey on, you know, how did you get into the recruitment industry? Tell us about that. Yeah. So I'm sure that you get, you know, this story a lot. And I know that fellow recruiters I talked to recruiting wasn't anything that you could study in college. I mean, it might be different now, but you know, 10 plus years ago, it just wasn't. So I had a business administration degree and I, I worked all through college um, as a bartender and as a server. And uh, when I graduated with my business degree in, from Youngstown State in 2011, I didn't know what I was going to do. Um, and the restaurant that I had worked through all of college, they said, hey, you know, we're actually opening up a second location because you have your business degree. You don't really know what you want to do. Maybe you can help us open up that restaurant and hire the staff and be a and be the general manager. So I did that for a year and it was such a cool experience. Um, ultimately it did not do well. It just was in a pretty rough location um, in Ohio. And so we had to close the doors after a year, but such a great learning experience. And then after that, I knew that I didn't want to just, you know, go back to serving and bartending. I was ready to take that next step. Um, and I also wanted to get out of Ohio just to see if I could do it. So I didn't really know anyone in Charlotte. I knew one person, um, shout out Jamie Watkins. She was a teacher here. <laughs> And her and I went to high school together and uh, I visit her one time. I freaking fell in love with Charlotte. So then I, I up and moved a couple months later um, and got a restaurant management degree or restaurant management job with Red Lobster. Okay. And um, that was fun. Did that for a year and a half. But I wanted to get out of the restaurant industry because I wanted to surround myself with more people that were 
you know, like-minded and that wanted more out of life and that were hungry and that were go-getters. And, and, you know, I think you can find that in the restaurant industry, but it was tough. And um, so I found a friend in Charlotte and I lived with her for a couple of years and her mom actually owned a recruiting company in Rhode Island and she was a bad ass. And I had no idea what recruiting was, but her and I instantly hit it off when I met her and I would talk to her and, and use her as a mentor. And she said, you know, I know you want to get out of the restaurant industry. I think you should look into recruiting. And so I fell into it. I just, someone recommended yep. it to me and I fell into it. And, you know, I, I interviewed with a couple of firms in Charlotte and I started off with like a small boutique firm here in the Carolinas as their fourth or fifth employee hired on and stayed with them for a little bit over four years and watched them grow, you know, from four employees to 60. And it was such a great experience that uh, met some great people along the way. I learned a lot, um, learned a lot about not what to do or what to do and <laughs> learned a lot about what not to do. And um, ultimately wanted, had such a passion for it, but wanted to do things, you know, on my own terms and um, wanted to go after clients that I had a passion for helping and wanted to stay local in the Charlotte community. So had aspirations to go out on my own. And so what got out of the industry for a year and a half and went into the mortgage industry and uh, had some great leaderships, uh, some great leadership experience at Movement Mortgage, stayed there for a year and a half. And then ultimately my business partner and I, Katie, uh, went off on our own April of 2019. So it's been a little over after a year. Yeah. Nice. Nice. So how did you... How did you meet Katie? Was she a part of a, another business? I mean, how did what, what was the kind of conversation for you guys to get started? Yeah, so Katie was, um, she, her and I worked together at the first firm that I had mentioned. Okay. Um, I, I was there, I think, for maybe a year before, a year, year and a half before she got there. So by the time that she started, I was her direct manager, which was actually really cool because um, mm -hmm. Katie was like this badass. She owned her own company previously and uh, she was so driven and so smart and I felt so lucky to have her and her and I instantly worked so well together. So I was uh, a lot more on the business development sales side and then Katie was like my number one recruiter that partnered with me on everything. We both had such a passion for helping our clients and we both had these high expectations of ourselves and of each other. And so her and I like ended up being really successful together, um, billing, you know, number one, number two, people billing in the company and uh, always worked well together. So when I left, um, you know, she quickly followed because I think that we had always wanted to continue to work together. So she actually went to Movement Mortgage with me, which was really cool. <laughs> oh, so you guys went to one company, the next company, and then you guys decided to go on your own. There you go. <laughs> we did because, you know, people and, we, and we're going to go into this in a little bit more in detail, but. Omada search is team, right? Omada is the Greek word for team. And we feel that, and we both are hundred percent aligned in this, that nothing is as important as the people that you're working with and the team that you have, you know, no matter if you have the best product or the best service, you have to have the right people in place. And Katie and I always work so well together and that's hard to find. And so yeah. when you find that you want to hold on to it, you know, right. so, for sure. yeah. For sure. Now, I know you guys have become friends. I mean, I know it's not always all hunky dory. Like, you know, what are, what are some experiences like? Is it challenging kind of working with your best friend at times and stuff like oh, that? Heck yeah, it's yeah. so challenging, you know, and it's it's funny because um, we started our, our business in April. I was actually I uh, my my husband, my now husband proposed in the beginning of April and then Katie and I. There's an with our job one. at the end of April <laughs> and then I got married in July of last year with, and, and I married Katie in the business so it really is like a marriage mm -hmm. you know the, I mean a partnership in business is a marriage and you have to be open to communicating and talking all the time because you're two different people right. and you have different passions and you have different thoughts and you have different opinions and so Katie and I um, have been working you know we've worked with coaches we've worked with people like you we've worked with other people um, you know, we both go to therapy because that's so mm -hmm. important to keep that yep. open dialogue, um, going and yeah, it's been, it's been tough, but it's been great. I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to do it with anyone else. Um, because she understands how I operate. I understand how she operates. And, uh, of course we're going to have tough times, but we just are so great at, now at communicating. Yeah. 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 You guys are, you guys are an awesome team. You guys are fun to work with, but you guys are, you guys have something really special going on, you know? Um, that you guys have created and it's amazing what you guys have accomplished, you know, in just a short year's time, um, yeah. you know, as a business and as professionals and things like that. So it's definitely been fun for me to be 
you know, part of your guys, you know, journey along the way, to, you know, in some stage. But um, yeah, I know that that's anytime you're working with friends, family, it always adds. I mean, I grew, I had a family business for years and that's always the, one of the bigger challenges, you know, of communicating and having the, you know, separating the relationships and things like that. You know, it's not always. Yeah, really. and, <laughs> and totally. And I mean, yeah. it gets really hard and you know, cause you did, like you said, the family business. I mean, first and foremost, and Katie and I established this up front, our friendship, right. comes, it's number one. So, right. and we, and I mean, she's, she's my, she's my person, right. And mm -hmm. Charlotte and, and I love her dearly. And I know that she loves me too. And so we always said, Hey, the business is important to both of us, but the number one is we're not going to let anything happen where it's going to ruin that ruin the friendship. Right. right. Um, and people grow. And, and when you grow, you, you go through different seasons with people. And I think most people know that um, Katie is pregnant too, which is like another right. layer of things that yep. we, you know, we've ha have happened over the last year. Mm -hmm. Um, and so just navigating that and we're so excited to have someone on board, but now we're getting to the point where I want her to be able to enjoy that time and relax because a big reason why Katie and I did this was, and we worked with you because you made us put it together a business plan. Like we did this because we want women to have it all. And this was our plan the whole time is to be right. able to have a family and have a business and do it all. Right. And so we knew that going in and it's good to talk about that. And I'm so glad that we did, but then when it actually happens and she's yeah. pregnant, that's a whole different thing, you know? Yeah. So we're navigating that too. And it's, I mean, it's fun. It's hard, but it's so, it's so much fun. Yeah. Well, that's inspiring. You know, I mean, the fact that you guys are looking at this from like, you know, yeah, okay, we've got this business, but it's also beyond that. It's this dream of, yeah, we can be the powerful business woman. We can be the mom. We can do it all. We can be the white, you know, that's, that's incredible, yeah. you know? Yeah. And that's, that's a great vision as you guys continue to expand and, you know, that you guys have that kind of support for one another you know, um, not only the business, but professional. And it sounds like as you guys bring on the team members, it's going to be the same thing, you know, as you expand the business. Mm -hmm. so, You're absolutely right. You know, what were, as you kind of rolled out into year one, I mean, what were some of the biggest challenges you were facing once you guys went out on your own? Um, you know, that's a great question. Um, I think that you don't realize how much is involved in starting your own business. So Katie and I knew sales and we knew recruiting, mm -hmm. but we didn't really think about all the complexities when it came to, you know, the finance side of it, the setting up the business from a legal perspective, you know, right. the, the marketing behind it. I mean, the IT support, for instance, like all those things you have to do on your own. Right. Um, luckily, like Katie and I are both very, very resourceful. I think that that's a strength of both of ours. So we've been able to roll with the punches and learn as we go. And we both love to learn. But I think that that was hard. And that was a big realization at, is when you go out on your own, you don't have these resources. You have to kind of create them for yourself. And then on top of that, no one's holding you accountable. You have to hold yourself accountable every single day. Right. Um, to show up, right. To show up for your partner, to show up for yourself, to show up for your business and to show up for your clients. Um, so that was, that was a big, a big thing too. Yeah. Um, when we started working together, you had a bunch of resistance around, uh, mm -hmm. both you and Katie talking about, you know, niching down, you know, and I know there's a lot of people that are listening to this that, you know, have been in the recruiting industry for a while and, and, you know, maybe you stayed a generalist and things like that, but share your experience of kind of the process you guys went through to go from like, yeah, we don't want to do that to let's embrace this. And then what, what's happened since? Yeah, we, uh, <laughs> Katie and I are both very, um, I don't know. We're very analytical. We, we, we didn't pull the plug with or push. What's it saying? We didn't go through with you. I don't know. We didn't pull the trigger. Yeah. Yeah, pull the trigger. I'm like, there's some sort of thing. We didn't pull the trigger with Donnie for months and months because we were the, you know, we were nervous about the investment and, and we thought we could figure it out. And, and um, you know, we, we were just wanting to provide a service for all of our clients all over the world, no matter what they wanted. And we were working really hard, but we weren't working smart. Um, and we had a lot of resistance around that because we have, you know, recruiting is recruiting is recruiting. It's not rocket science. You know, you have to be able to provide a, a great service for your clients and, and be able to communicate with them and set expectations. But, you know, recruiting for a controller is not that much different than recruiting for a marketing director. Um, and it took us a while to figure out that 
if we didn't get a niche and, and figure out who we wanted our target audience to be, we were never going to be able to streamline things and be efficient and do and have marketing that really spoke to anybody because it wasn't speaking to anyone at all, you know? Right. So we had a resistance because we wanted to provide a service for anybody that wanted us to provide a service for them. Um, you know, we, for instance, we wanted to focus on small businesses, but it, it was hard to come up with, um, how to go out and figure out, like touch all those people because mm -hmm. we just weren't working smart. So the second that we did sit down and say, okay, we've been in the finance and accounting space for, you know, seven years now. I think we just do it. I think we just go for finance and accounting and we put all of our effort there. I mean, the second that we were intentional about that, the universe really heard it. It really felt like something shifted in the universe um, because the stars were aligning. And then right. all, all of a sudden we have clients reaching out to us in manufacturing and distribution, which is the industry we focus on within finance and accounting, it was such a cool thing. And all we had to do was speak it kind of into existence, right? And we pushed for yeah. a couple months and you, you saw that. Yeah, no, it was, it was awesome for you guys to go through that because it was like a good month where it was like, what do we want to do? A back and forth, mm -hmm. back and forth. And then you guys like, okay, we're doing this boom. And then it's like rapid success right after that. Everything started to align, just like you said. So, and I mean, yeah. it's not, and it's not always... <laughs> And it's not always that way, of course. Um, but, you know, when you get that kind of alignment and that kind of target, then you can start to build that messaging and differentiate yourself and, and do those types of things. So, um, you know, I applaud you guys for, for working through that, you know, because that's, you know, there's some people that don't. They just kind of stay and play it safe, you know, and that's a big step. So, yeah, it was a huge step for us. It was it, it really is what took our business from here to here as soon as right. we had that niche and, and we were really intentional about that. Right. What would you say, you know, from, you know, what have been some of the things outside of the, 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 you know, positioning and stuff that we've worked on, but like, you know, creating content has been a new journey for you. You know, mm -hmm. what has been, what's that been like, you know, in terms of putting yourself out there and where you're at now with all that? Yeah. So I, I think that, um, I always understood the, no, that's a lie. I was going to say, I understood the power of marketing. I don't think I understood it completely like I do now. But I understood the value of my LinkedIn network and I understood the value of, you know, posting like once or twice a week. I was doing that already before bringing before we did bring you in. Um, I didn't understand the value of a video at all. And I would say that that has been a huge game changer for Katie and I. And, um, you know, you pushing us to get out there from a video perspective because we both have so much passion Yep. so much energy and so much love for what we do. And that doesn't always come across in email and text messages and, and just written copy. Right. And, right. and I think that the second that we shifted our mindset around the video um, and we were able to like, let our personality shine, we were attracting what we were putting out. And it was, it was amazing. I, I can't believe that we ha didn't do that sooner. Right. Because yeah. we were able to show up unapologetically be ourselves show up in an authentic way and the people that resonated with it are the ones that are working with us. And at the end of the day, like, what else, what more could you want? You know, right. you want to work with people that kind of speak your language and that you can you resonate with and that you have those same values. And the second we started putting ourselves out there, especially from a video perspective, we, we were we were getting what we were putting out. And that was really cool. Yeah. 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 And you guys, you know, I don't know if you remember the first video you guys sent over to me um, when you guys did the little back and forth. And, we were so awkward. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and then, and then, you know, I gave you feedback and you guys both were like, well, we don't want to post it now, you know, right. Share about like the whole approach that I've kind of pushed on you guys and this whole progress, not perfection and how that's helped you just take action and go. Man, progress, not perfection, I think has been the mantra for us in 2020. At least it has for me. Um, we're both, you know, I hate the term perfectionist, right? I think that's right. a little bit overused, but we were, we want to make sure that every time we show up, the first time we show up, um, we want it to be perfect. We want it to be as near perfect as possible. And it's so funny. We probably took the first time we started doing those videos and, and when Katie and I sat next to each other and did those, we, I mean, we laugh about this now, but I think we probably did like 25 takes or something absolutely ridiculous. And we would send you those ones and it just wasn't quite right. Or we said something a little bit wrong. And then, um, you know, you said, you just gave us these pointers, but you said, you guys are, this is great. This is your first video. Like give yourself grace. This is your first video, but this is what you can improve on next time. 
Um, and I think once we finally posted that first video that wasn't perfect for us, that was a huge deal. That was a big step. The videos right. were not perfect. And we right. had feedback from you, feedback from other people like, hey, good job on putting yourself out there, but yep. maybe do this different next time. Um, but the second that we did it and we just, we kept showing up more and more like ourselves after we just put it out there and didn't worry about perfection. And, right. you know, you, don't, you can't get better if you don't practice and you can't practice unless you actually put it out there and get feedback. So. Right. And even that imperfect product that you put out, do you remember the stats on that? I mean, we still had over 2,000, maybe close to 3,000 views. And we had a ton of support in terms of comments. Like, yeah. I'm so, like, so proud of you guys. Like, you guys showed up. Like, way to rock it. Um, it right. was very, very overwhelming, the amount of support we got. And I don't think anyone noticed that we said, um, too many times, you know, <laughs> <laughs> or whatever I'm, it was. I'm at school, yeah. Well, I think there's always the balance, right? You, you, you do obviously want to come in and you want to give your best, your best first impression. Um, but I think that in, in our world today, people always want more authenticity. They crave that imperfection. They would rather have more of a human approach because of what they're seeing in terms of content out there. Um, that's, you know, usually hard salesy or, or, or trying to be too perfect. And when you can come out and yeah, still craft a good message, but be a human that delivers it, you know, you get a good balance there. Yeah. What would you say, you know, like, okay, well, that was about three months ago. We did that video. Now here we are in July. Like, where's your mindset now? Cause I know you're still cranking these things out and now you, yeah. pull, you know, so what's that like? We're, we're still trying to crank out at least, you know, one to two videos um, a week. And it's funny that this is the topic too, because the, la the last video I posted, so I went from not wanting to put a video out there where I said something wrong or my hair was messed up or I said um too many times to, to the point where my last video on LinkedIn, which I think has more engagement than any other video so far. It's wild. Either yeah. people like to see me mess up or people just like to see the human side. Probably yep. the second. But um, so many people, so many comments are like, I can relate to this. I can relate to this. And it's just me just showing up as myself on a yeah. video, like with all my screw ups. And someone's like, wow, I didn't know all of this behind the scenes, like this went into like making your video so good at the end. And it was, um, it was, it was uh, pretty neat that, that we've come that far in three months where now I'm just like, Hey, this is what it takes. And this, I don't get it perfect every time. Like this yeah. is me messing up. Like laugh, you gotta laugh at yourself. You know, that was so good. Super creative. And if you're uh, listening right now, head over and check out Jessica's profile, Jessica Shuttleworth on LinkedIn. And you'll see she did that blooper video and it's, and it's funny and it's raw and it's authentic and it gives you a chance to engage with your audience in, in a different way, you know, like you yeah. said. And sometimes um, when we do th goofy things like that, that's where we get that connection with people. Because um, sometimes people won't connect with our value-based content as much, um, you know, because it may not hit with them right in that moment. But when they're constantly seeing you show up and show up with that personality, I think it's amazing that, you know, we went from, I don't know if I want to put this out there, to sharing all the bloopers and and the beeping out the cuss words and all that stuff. So that was a, that was a killer video. Um, yeah. You know, I mean, if you really look at what have the results been from kind of our efforts, you've been through the relevant recruiter program, you went through the original 90 days. Now you're part, part of the mastermind. Um, you know, I love working with you and Katie, you, girl, you girls just kick ass. But yeah. what is, you know, like from an actual, the nitty gritty contracts, job orders, like what, what's that look like since you've really started going all in on this? Yeah. And I, and it's, it probably, it is probably worth mentioning to everyone too. I think we officially, so you and I have been talking for um, about a year now, but we didn't right. pull a trigger until February of this year. So we pulled the trigger in February thinking that, you know, Hey, okay, 2019, we got a couple months under our belt, but 2020, like this is the year we're just going to explode. So we signed up for you in February. We're so excited. And then I don't think I have to remind everyone what the last couple of months have been like. Right. I mean, mm -hmm. March hits and essentially every single client that we had hiring freeze, everything stopped, everything came to a screeching hole. And we were terrified because we'd already made that investment with you. Mm -hmm. And it, you know, we took it as sort of a sign like, Hey, let's slow down. Let's go all in with Donnie. If there's a time to do it, it's going to be now. We lost all of our, we lost all of our jobs that we had open um, beginning of March. And it just so happens that that's when we started implementing your program. I mean, we signed up with you in February, but it, it took us a couple of weeks to right. really like change our mindset and dial in on our tar niche market. Right. And so when we, when we said, okay, this is who we are, this is, this is what we're going after. We put that in action. We started with the marketing campaign. We had more signed contracts in April, May, 
than we had, I think, in the last seven months prior to that during COVID. It was amazing. People are, I mean, companies were still hiring and this was a time for us to slow down and really go all in on our brand and who we were. And it showed, and I mean, it showed. So I think since um, March, right, I would, I'll say March, because that's when we officially put your stuff into action. Mm-hmm. We've had um, close to 10 new contracts and um, probably at least 15 job orders in the last three months through COVID because That's of the awesome. thing. Yeah. Yeah. And we actually have a placement under our belt too. Um, and almost two places. Yeah. Specifically from these efforts. Excellent. I mean, I love hearing that success. I mean, but that's really just because you guys did the work, right? You guys, uh, once you started buckling down, going all in on it, then yeah. the success started to happen. So what do you foresee possibility in the terms of revenue, you know, out of this whole, this whole thing? And obviously, you know, there's, there's the possibility and what you think you can actually close and stuff, but. Yeah. Um, well, just the open job orders that we have alone, um, the potential revenue is close to $350,000 just with those open ones that we have now. Um, really, if I'm being realistic, Katie and I are great at what we do. I think that we, I think our average fill rate is over 50%. So even if we close half of those, right, even if we close a quarter of those, I mean, close to a hundred thousand dollars just in revenue is, is, is for sure possible through COVID yeah. in the last couple of months. Yeah. Yeah. You guys are killing it. I mean, it's the classic example of controlling what you can control, taking the ownership mm-hmm. of your business, you know, staying out of the stories of everything else that's going on. And, and you know, I mean, not everybody. Right? Yeah, it is yeah. It's incredibly hard. It's incredibly hard. And not everybody, you know, that's easy to say. And you can still have that mindset and not have the same, you know, level of success. I mean, it's, it's, um, it's amazing what you guys have been able to accomplish, you know, during this, during this time. And, and it's really just kind of the catapult for what happens, you know, what happens next. So, I want to give you a chance to be the marketing expert here. For those of us that are listening, I mean, what would, what kind of advice would you give somebody that's thinking about, you know, doing some marketing for their, for the recruiting business? Do it yesterday. I think I've told you this multiple times. Mm-hmm. Um, we finally, we finally went in and within the first three weeks, I remember calling you being like, Donnie, I cannot believe we didn't do this day one. <laughs> um, and I was just talking to someone the other day. I know that it seems like it's an investment right at the beginning, but the return on investment is 10 times over, um, which is why I re-upped with you and Katie and I are still working with you. We were almost to the point where like, we don't want to not work with you, right? Because we know what it looks like. You've seen it. You're the expert when it comes to marketing. And all we do is take what you say, add our personal touch to it. And it, it works and it's proven, mm. right? Yeah. So I wish that we just done it sooner. I mean, if I'm being honest, I think that, you know, I'll never say cold calling is dead. I'm a salesperson, but it's 2020 and we're all working remote. I mean, if you're not taking advantage of marketing right now in this day and age, you're going to be, you're going to lose out and you're going to be left behind. Just, that's just the nature of where we are today. Beautiful. I'm gonna have some competition with your with your marketing skills right there. I love it. <laughs> uh, it's awesome. It's so fun to be working with with the two of you and just watching you guys. You know what's what's happening, what's transpired, and you know similar with you running with Katie. That's exactly you know people I like to run with is people that are you know want to achieve and work hard and and you know have a, a dream for success. And so you know it's incredibly awesome. I mean, what are you most excited about now? you know, with your business kind of moving forward in these next few months and next year? Yeah. I mean, I think I'm just excited about the possibility. Sorry if you hear my husband is just getting home. Um, But I think I'm just excited about the possibility. You know, doing, doing, um, signing up with you and moving forward through COVID was really scary because Mm -hmm. none of us knew what what was going to happen, right? Right. None of us knew what this would look like. But if we can have this much success over the last couple of months, through this difficult time, the most difficult thing that I've ever been through in my life, in, in, my, in my life, right, in the last 30 plus years, then we can do anything. And that's, right. I think, the biggest takeaway for us is we were able to not only survive these last couple of months, but we've been able to thrive. And, and if we can do that during these last couple of months, I am so excited to see once things do pick up and, you know, when our new normal kind of 
levels out mm -hmm. where we're going to be able to go. The possibilities are endless. And I think that that was the biggest thing for us is just the mindset behind it, knowing that, hey, if you want to do this, then you can do it. So right. you've helped a lot with just shifting our mindset and, and knowing what, what we're capable of and, and what's possible for us. It's been awesome. Well, happy to hear that. And, and, you know, again, love, love the success you guys are seeing, you know, from that. And obviously a lot of, a lot of fun stuff coming up with you and, and Katie here in the future of the business and the baby. And, you know, that's yeah. part of your vision too. So that's super cool that that's it's, all, that's, that's all happening here. Um, it's, yeah. Yeah. It really is. You got a couple of comments here from uh, Sherry, you know, Sherry and Christina, uh, both in the program um, as well. And Sherry said that she, her story getting the recruiting industry is dang near exactly the same as you. Um, and I, know, I mean, said, all of us fall into it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, same thing with me, um, just in a different angle, but yeah, for sure. It's, I don't know who goes to college to be a recruiter. <laughs> hey, they should though. Yeah. Uh, Christina said that this was uh, incredibly inspirational. So thanks for sharing. She just, um, they're, they're on board with us now too. So um sherry christina thanks for joining in and listening today um and being yeah. with us and i will also i would also just like to encourage anyone that's watching this or anyone that's you know contemplating whether to sign up with donnie um please give me a call give katie a call we're more than happy to to talk to anyone that's considering this if it um if it wasn't for donnie in, in the program that we went through with you i would seriously be nervous about where omada search would be today um, you gave us the direction that we needed. You gave us the support that we needed, um, the marketing tools and resources, but you still held us accountable to do the work ourselves, which is, I mean, which was perfect for Katie and I. And, and, and when we implemented things, we, we saw it work and it was, uh, it was so cool. So just thank you so much. And I, I seriously do encourage anyone and, and welcome anyone to reach out to me if, uh, if they have any questions. Oh, well, thank you for that. Thank you. I didn't even have to pay you to say that. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> I'll send you an invoice later. Yeah, send me the invoice later. <laughs> um, Ed, what's up, buddy? Thanks for tuning in. Ed's a past client um, and said, good, good stuff, you too. So thank you for uh, joining in with us, Ed. Um, and, and Karina, working with Karina right now as well. Karina was at, has a question for you, Jessica. What, what, are you, you know, what are the topics that you're um, you know, sharing on with your content and things like that? Um, so that's the only thing we don't really have, um, any sort of organization around that. I will say that we didn't believe in, if you asked us in 2019, if we believed in marketing, like we do, and we would put all this money towards marketing, I would have said, heck no, but we actually went even a step further, you know, going through this program with Donnie and we saw the value in it and we, and, uh, it, it, it is work though. So we've actually hired some, a, another person to help us with editing our videos and helping like write content, right? We like, we'll, we'll send him a video of a bunch of things that are on our mind and then he takes it all of our stuff. So it's all, you know, it's all coming from us but he's actually taking it and editing it and then posting it out there. So right now they're helping us a little bit, but it's anything. And Donnie has taught us this too. You know, I get off a call with a candidate and, and, and an interesting topic comes up, you know, the other day um, I was talking to a candidate and he was so frustrated because he was applying to all these jobs and he wasn't hearing back. And so that just sparked something in me like, well, if he's having this issue, other people have to be struggling with this too. Yeah. So it's just being able to, adapt to things that you're talking about every day, right? Not making it complicated, not have, not making it seem like it's this huge thing you have to bite off. I mean, we're in recruiting every day and the stuff that comes to us, it's common sense. It's not common sense to job searchers. This is a big, this is a big step in everyone's life, right? So just being able to take everyday conversations and say, Hey, I bet this would make a great marketing post. I, I'll make a quick video or I'll do a quick thing. So it's very, very random for me right now. I don't know if that's the right answer, if that's the right way to go about it, but we are just going with the fly and, and talking about things that are really relevant in our business every single day that people are bringing up to us. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's not really random. It, the, and this is kind of going back in your original point of, of when you have the niche and you have the market and you're constantly talking to the same person, then that conversation that is technically random is actually incredibly relevant because your audience is, you know, that that's exactly what you're posting it for. So, and that's a, a you know, anytime you have that phone conversation, it's the easiest thing to do is just regurgitate and share your experience. And that's where I think a lot of times lead generation is over or not lead generation, but content creation is overthought. Right. Um, I agree. And I mean, cause I was, we fell victim to that. Right. Yeah. I mean, it was, it seemed just like this big, huge thing we had to bite off and we had to put so much time in and it is work, right? It mm -hmm. is, you have to be intentional about it, but 
if you can just work smarter, right? And just yeah. take those real live conversations and real live interactions and plug that into your content, then you're right. It's relevant because you're yeah. having these conversations already. Yeah. And I think, you know, the other thing too is, is, you know, what you guys are doing well is you're looking at it the, that um, you're, sorry, I was just looking at a comment. Thank you. Glad that that was helpful um, uh, for you, Karina. But yeah. the, um, no, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> um, you were talking about uh, random content, content creation. Content creation, yeah, it'll come back to me, but I can't remember where I, where I was going with that when I th totally lost my train of thought there. Um, oh, outsourcing is where I was going, <laughs> right? So what's, what you guys have been able to do is take and you've learned this strategy and then you can go have somebody else help you with some of the implementation, right? Because the idea is you want to, in my opinion, you want to drive the strategy from a marketing and business development part for your company. You want to understand it. You want to know it. And then you can tell the other people what you want to do. And what the opposite of that is, is then you go hire an agency and the agency tells you what your strategy is. And half the time, the strategy that they want you have is just what the book of services they have to offer are, right? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And so you're seeing, and in in a, just kind of speak to that, how you're able to leverage what you've learned and then have somebody else implement it, you know, and probably saving yourself a ton of money by doing it that way too. Huge. Yeah. And time, right? I mean, yeah. time is one of our biggest assets right now. Um, sure. And we, you know, Katie and I are the business. We are, we're, the brand is us. So if we can still have our voice be heard, but have people implement things like, Hey, like this is what we want. Let's go do it. Right. And have people like on that vision with us, then, then yes, like outsourcing. I, I didn't learn that until I started working with you too. Right. Um, and that way we focus on what we want to focus on and what we're, what we're good on. Um, yeah. So it's been, it's been awesome. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for hanging out with me today, Jessica. Um, I think this is our second time hanging out today, so it's been awesome. Yeah. But, um, so if you could leave our audience with kind of one last piece of advice, one tip, you know, whether it be life recruiting, whatever it is, what comes, what comes to your head? Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to go back to our full circle to what we first said, progress, not perfection. Um, Love you know, it. show up unapologetically yourself and don't focus on the perfection. Just focus on taking that one step, right? Maybe today you just record a video and see how it feels and you don't post it, but maybe next week you do post it and uh, you'll be pleasantly surprised at the, the amount of support and love that you receive. So progress, not perfection for sure. Awesome. Thank you for sharing that again. Thank you for being here. For those of you that are listening, yeah. you can check out Jessica on LinkedIn, Jessica Shuttleworth on LinkedIn, Omada Search. Her partner is Katie Marriott. And um, yeah, you'll be hearing a lot from them here in the future. Uh, they're making a lot of noise right now. So again, yeah. Jessica, thank you for joining. Everybody else, you have a great weekend. Happy Friday. Yeah. Thanks, Donnie. Thank you. Talk to you all yeah. soon.